So starting with this module, we're going to start getting into the five stages of uh, organizational change, organizational development. And the first stage is the anticipation for the news of need of change. So we're going to talk a little bit about organizations and how they actually look at the environment they're in and their current production levels, how they benchmark versus other companies to kind of determine that there is a need for change. And then we're going to also talk a little bit about a couple of models to kind of conceptualize the change at this point. And those models that I'm going to present primarily are for you to be able to conceptualize the problem in a way that makes it easier to communicate, but also there are models that you can use as tools to help communicate this to decision makers in the organization as well. So generally speaking, organizational development, the actual word development means to move forward, to change. So we're generally talking about a process of renewal in organizations. So the idea that a stable organization is only going to be successful if everything else is stable. If the inputs are stable, so their supplies are stable. If their processes are still basically state of the art and haven't changed for any reason under um, a new techniques, new technologies, that their outputs are still being received in the same way, i.e. the customer base hasn't changed, the need for the product hasn't changed, competition producing the project hasn't changed, and the actual overall environment, the culture they exist in, the expectations of the clients, and also even the legal um, uh, requirements, the governments within which they function. If all of those are stable, then an organization can stay relatively stable. The reality is, though, that it's very rare to find that kind of a situation. Um, you may find more stable environments where the need for change is less or change can be more gradual, but in almost all cases, we are talking about whether an organization wants to or not, it is going to be in a process of change. And organizational development at its heart is the concept of actually taking preventative control of that change to purposely renew an organization in order to match its environment. So renewal of organizations, this first step is to actually for an organization to recognize the need to make adaptive changes to the environment. The environment and it's all those components and open systems, including even internal of the organization, is going to drive change. So the only real constant we know is that there is a uh, change in organization. And generally, every generation thinks that their generation is experiencing more change than ever. But it actually is quantifiably measurable that currently organizations are in a greater state of flux. And what I mean by that is technology is advancing at a much more impactful rate than it has even in previous decades. So the way we communicate, the way we get information, all of this is actually changing at a very quick rate, which is also then having an impact on how organizations function. Um, this is often referred to as future shock. So basically companies and individuals and cultures can get in a situation where the change is so rapid that they're having an actual negative reaction to the change. Well, that might be an adaptive individual behavior. Um, I know, for instance, that in classes, a current new technology is to incorporate polls into the class to where when you're lecturing in a classroom, at any point during your slide presentation, you can stop and actually have a poll which any student can use their computer or smartphone to quickly answer. So you can basically do real-time quizzing. Uh, I personally have not made use of this technology. And honestly, if I sat down and was thinking rationally about it. It's not that I'm like, ah, I don't want to change my slides or I'm not sure the value of this. I can see the value of it. It's just, it's brand new technology. And do I want to take the time to learn it? So by making that choice of reacting individually to future shock, to a concern of things have changed too quick and I'm not comfortable with it, that's fine for me personally, but what does that mean for my teaching? Well, it means that other instructors are doing this. Their classes are becoming more interactive. So in a way, I need organizational development in my in-person teaching to recognize the need for me to renew how I'm doing my process of teaching in those classes. So organizations need this capacity to adapt. They need to recognize that change is going to come and that there will be resistance to change so that it is easier to make changes when you're aware of those resistances, you can quantify and kind of measure and know they're there and then create a plan to get around them. So again, renewal of organization, that first step is usually looking at focusing on changing the systems of the organization itself, recognizing the need for change, and often looking for changes that very well may be system-wide. 
So organizational renewal is important to survival. Um, it's an ongoing process. It builds in innovation and adaptation. And I do want to point out that this course and basically the field of organizational development is relying on a statistical probability. And what that statistical probability is, is that we know that people are resistant to change. Organizations become, especially larger organizations, become very set in their ways, very bureaucratic. So generally, basically going into any organization blind, you know nothing about it, it's a safe bet to say that they are not being as innovative as adapt and as adaptive as their environment would normally dictate. So we move in assuming this, but we should take at least a moment in this first step of the five-step process of organizational development to ask ourselves legitimately, is this a situation that really needs aggressive organizational development? All organizations can benefit from this, but there are situations where it should be slower. And that's really what we're gonna be talking about now is a little bit of an idea of how to do a quick snapshot, if you will, of what the organization situation is to determine kind of the speed and urgency of needing to build in organizational renewal. So it's an ongoing process, and it would be in any organization, but the speed and urgency of that process, how much innovation and adaptation is needed, is something that needs to be measured, if you will, or at least considered. Because what you don't wanna do is go into an organization that actually is fairly stable, fairly slow changing, but that's actually good for its current environment, and then start adapting in innovations and adaptations change for change sake. Generally, we don't run into that problem because most organizations by their nature are resistant to change, so they usually are less changeful than they should be, but we want to at least recognize that. So the model we're going to talk about basically looks at the approach to change in two dimensions. So it's a two by two model. So you basically determine if an organization is low or high in its current adaptive orientation. In other words, what is the culture like? Is the culture actually set towards stability or is it already one that aims towards kind of innovation and adaptation? The second is the environmental stability. So what is the organization currently existing in as far as how stable that environment is? And again, when we're talking about environment, we're mainly talking about those inputs. So are their supply chain stable? Is their workforce that they draw from stable? Is their output stable? So is there kind of a stability in their competition? Is there a stability in their market share that they're comfortable with? Are, are the customers still wanting their products and valuing their products? And is kind of the legal cultural expectations that the organization exists in also stable? Looking at the two of these, as we're going to see on the next slide, gives us a model that lets us determine where the organization currently is at. So basically, if we have low stability, I'm sorry, high stable, stable so um, the, the uh, environmental stability is our vertical axis. So towards the top is very turbulent, lots of changes. Supply chains are questionable. The demand for the product may be shifting dramatically. There may be major changes in the culture that no longer appreciate the product or the way the company has been uh, positioned in the past. There may be massive legislation change happening. Compared to at the bottom of that, we have stable. So basically there isn't a lot of flux going on in any of those areas. And then we have the adaptation to change. So we have low adaptation. Basically, the organization is a stable bureaucracy, generally, and it has not really got mechanisms to do quick change compared to a high adaptation orientation, a very adaptive organization that basically already has kind of an OD look. So what we then find if we cross these two um, components is we get four general areas of a way an organization adapts to change. So in a stable and low adaptive environment, we basically have what's often referred to as thermostat management. Basically, all management is doing is just occasionally checking the thermostat. So think of it as if you're in a room, you, have, you want it to be 72 degrees, and it is 72 degrees. And really, your only job is about every half hour, you walk over and look at the thermostat. Does it still say 72? Good. If there's a change, though, there's not a lot of mechanism here to notice. So this is a situation where the organization has come up with basically not a lot of energy or effort is put into organizational change. However, if change is needed, it's not the mechanism, the mechanisms aren't there to adapt to that change. So if that environmental stability suddenly becomes less stable, 
the thermostat management style will have a tr have a lot of problems adapting to that. If we have a stable environment with a high adaptation orientation, and this is probably the preferable of the two, but we want to make sure that we're not creating a structure that's creating change for change's sake, we have satisfying management. And this is basically where management is just trying, it's, it's constantly looking at a thermostat, but it's ready to go if there's a change. There are plans in place. Um, it's not trying to do major changes yet, but the mechanism is there. Now, as we move to a hyper-turbulent environment, you can clearly see that we have reactive versus renewal. So when there's hyper-turbulent environmental stability, in other words, the stability of the organization is very questionable. There's constant changes in the environment of various forms. You can either react to them after they occur, which is usually a, um, uh, not a good way to do business because you're basically having to constantly pay catch up, or you want to create a renewal organization, kind of what we're talking about in this class. So again, this class assumes that most organizations are needing to move more towards an adaptive orientation and that just the nature of business today means most organizations are likely to be moving more towards the turbulent than the stable environmental stability. We're going to talk about each one of these management styles in turn now. So sluggish thermostat management, stable environment, low adaptation. Basically, you create a management style based on very low risk. So this is going to be an environment where culturally management has, be, has been basically learned that change is not a good thing, um, that the organization works as it is. Um, it has spent most of its energy basically stabilizing all of its internal systems based on a stable environment. And because of that, management has also become very intolerant of risk. Organizations using this style usually have very stable goals and a highly centralized bureaucratic structure. Now again, this isn't a bad thing if the environment suggests that that's what is needed. Um, it creates an, an organization that is not gonna take big risks that could actually endanger its situation um, or endanger the environment. So it's basically trying, I, the organization itself is in a let's not mess with the environment that we have. The problem, like I said, is, is that when this organization does suddenly or traumatically encounter changes in the environment, it is going to be the slowest to adapt. Satisfying management, stable environment, high adaptation. Basically, this is adequate and average. So the organization is in a good place. It's in a stable environment. Um, planning and decision making usually ends up being fairly concentrated at the top in this organization. Really the only difference between the sluggish system here is that we usually have plans in place. There is mechanisms for organizational development. However, there isn't necessarily a culture throughout the organization for it. So think of this more as there's an awareness in top levels that the stable environment the organization is enjoying may not continue throughout its entire life and therefore the organization does need to be re ready to react but currently lower levels of management are not being rewarded for risk-taking innovation or change so a reactive management hyper turbulent low adaptation this is basically where the organizations end up here from the bottom where they are adaptive and they're basically when you have great stability in the past and suddenly that stability goes away. So those last two management styles usually have a tendency unless those plans are really well laid out to end up in this box when change comes. Um, reacting after conditions change, short term crisis type adaptation usually involves replacing key people and hasty reorganization. So again, if you think about the satisficing management, the plans are in place, but if a sudden environmental change does hit that requires immediate reaction, they probably didn't see it coming. They weren't looking through it for it throughout the organization. And though top management is going to be having plans on tap to deal with it, they're usually going to be fairly non-invasive as far as requiring active participation from the entire organization, they're going to be invasive of sudden changes to the organization. Um, we need a brand new research and development team to come up with a new product and we need it now. And they move half of the organization into this new restructuring, um, which is going to basically create chaos because the organization itself is not adaptive to those kind of changes. And finally, we kind of have 
the goal of organizational development. But I do want to stress again that not every organization is going to thrive in this. Most will. And that is trying to set up an organization where the plans are not just concentrated at the top. There's not just an awareness that one day we may need to change. The entire culture from the top to the bottom rewards innovation, rewards coming up with better ways to do business, and is actually constantly looking out into the environment to anticipate change. Now this works the best when you have a hyper turbulent situation. So when the environment is changing, this is where this team really thrives. Um, and you can actually run into a little bit of issues that if you're in a stable environment, that this is, may become an organization that's changing for change's sake. And that is something we wanna worry about a little bit. Um, deals with future conditions before they occur, faster at developing new ideas. ideas. And again, because the entire SIS structure is now throughout the organization, it tends to be more participative, which means also uh, interventions meant to change how the organization functions usually are more successful. So again, all things being equal, one of the goals of organizational development is to move most organizations into this kind of transformational management style, where there aren't just plans for adaptation, there's actually a culture throughout the organization from the top to the bottom that rewards innovation, rewards coming up with new ways to do things. But again, if that organization then is in a relatively stable environment, there does need to be some checks and balances to make sure that those changes aren't being done simply to change. So again, all of this builds on the second model I wanna briefly re um, return to, and that's again, that systems approach. And I keep referring to it and I will throughout this class. Basically that idea that we break company into key processes and that we create teams from different departments to run them. So basically from systems approach, when we're looking at the systems model, again, we had those inputs, throughputs, outputs, and environment. So a systems approach in an organization is often going to mainly focus on the throughputs. So how do we actually take those inputs from the environment, our resources, our people that we're hiring, um, information, and what do we do inside the organization that results in the optimal outputs? So generally speaking, where OD lives is two portions of that open systems model. The analysis of all of the parts, so what's going on, what's going to go on, and then interventions mainly focused at the throughput part. So for example, creating teams from different departments to run various key processes. How can we actually set up key processes to be more efficient? We're again, focused on that throughput part. So the idea that the system is an interrelated set of parts, but also the throughputs are usually interrelated. So there is the people that actually bring the raw products in. There's initial processing. And those raw, raw products might actually be materials. They may also be thoughts, ideas, marketing campaigns. And how do we move them from initial stages to final product most efficiently? Usually it's unified by a design to achieve the organization's purpose and goals. So the basic qualities of any system is that any system within an organization should be designed to accomplish specific objectives. Every element has to have an established arrangement within the structure. So what do, how does each element interact with other elements? There's interrelationships that will exist amongst those elements, and that's basically communication lines. How do we increase and make communication more successful? The ingredients of process are more vital than the elements. So basically, how do we actually make sure each element is actually adding to the ingredient of the process, the process of the organization's throughput? And generally, the organization itself is more important than those elements. So if an element starts to actually be more important than the actual product, these are red flags. So if we think about these basic qualities of systems, we start to kind of get a roadmap for identifying how to build structures, elements, systems in an organization. We want to make sure that they're arranged in the most efficient way. We want to make sure that each element or each work team, if you will, is focused on objectives, that we want to focus on communication between each of these teams or work groups or elements to make sure that vital information is being passed, and that we want to make sure that the elements themselves are not becoming more important than the organizational goals or the actual organizational outcomes or products. And finally, just kind of a reminder to that open um, organizations and open systems. So again, we have resources and inputs, information, equipment, facilities, materials, money, people, technology. 
We have outputs, the products and goods and services. We have the feedback from the environment. Um, and that feedback can come from employees, they can come from customers, investors, government regulations, um, departments and managers. All of these are sources of information for what is happening outside the organization. But organizational development is mainly going to be focused on the transformational process or the throughputs, human resources, physical resources, and workplace actions.